Okay, guys, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Hopefully, we got things worked out here. All right. I'm going to go back now and sh uh, share my screen. Please let me know if you can see the video and that you can hear the video. Often try this one changed more time. the tent. I was happy that day. Uh, Notice well, we that there's a difference them. in direct and reported speech. Okay. And you can hear it? Yes. Okay. All right, let's try this again. When we report someone's words, we can do it in two ways. Direct speech and reported or indirect speech. All right, sorry guys. I, I can't hear the audio now. So one second, let me try one more thing. An example of direct speech is, Diane said, I am happy today. To write the same sentence in reported speech, we would say, Diane said. Okay, so again, I'm not sure, I guess you didn't see this before. Hopefully you can hear the video, but here she's comparing the direct and reported speech. Uh, for our purposes, when we created our wikis and we wrote out questions that we ask and the responses from our interviewees this is basically examples of direct speech so you weren't asked to write out my mom said but whatever you wrote out that was word for word his or her response and so again the wiki information was more related to direct speech both in the form of your questions and their responses and then the reported speech those examples were found uh, through your uh, paragraph when you were reporting on what they what they said so again reported speech and indirect speech is uh, the same but uh, basically uh, these were the two forms that we were working on last uh, last week said that she was happy that day notice that there's a difference in direct and reported speech when we change direct speech to reported speech we must often change the tense for example she said i am tired now again when we indicate said remember that this is the past tense and this is why we're going to have to use the past tense for the reported speech because this is indicating something that she's that happened in the past Right? Even though this is in the present tense, she's saying, I am tired at that moment. The whole sentence is in the past because of said being in the past. This is direct speech. She said that she was tired. This is reported speech. If we use the present tense in direct speech, we use the past tense in reported speech. Another example, he said, I have seen snow. This is direct speech. In reported speech, we say, he said that he has seen snow. Notice the present perfect changes to the past perfect. The children said, we are listening. This is direct speech. The children said, that they were listening. This is reported speech. Notice the present continuous changes to the past. Notice in all of these examples that we could also indicate time. So we could say, she said last week that she was tired, or we could say, she said that she was tired last week. Now these have slightly different meanings, but we could in indicate time in the reported speech based on what she says in the direct speech. So for example, if she said, uh, if the example for direct speech was, she said, um, well, she said last week, if, if you conducted the interview last week or yesterday, 
then you could say she said yesterday or last week that she was tired to indicate when she said she was tired. Continuous. Let's look at a real example. The son says to his father, I fell down the stairs. The father reports to his wife. He said that he had fallen down the stairs. The past tense in direct speech changes to the past perfect or stays in the simple past in reported. So again, notice the verb tense here. I fell down the stairs. So this is what the person says at that moment, indicating the past. Then you could say he said that he had fallen. Remember the past perfect is to indicate typically when two things are happening in the past. In this case, two things happened in the past. One was, well, he fell down the stairs. And the second thing that happened in the past was he said it. He actually mentioned it. All right, so this is a good example of when to use the past perfect and why we use the past perfect. Again, to indicate two things happening in the past, one happened before the other. Again, in this case, the past perfect to reflect a past event that happened before a second event in the past, in this case, when he actually said, said it, okay? speech. Also notice how the pronoun changes. Another example, Katie tells her friend, I have a secret. I really like. All right, so what do you think in this example? Hopefully you can see this, uh, the video here. I have a secret. I really like Thomas. What do you guys think? How would you change this? How could you change this to the reported speech version of this direct speech. Any ideas? Feel free to either post it in the chat or unmute your mic if you want to offer a suggestion. What do you think? If you want to post your suggestion, how would you change this to the reported speech version of this? I have a secret. I really like Thomas. And her name is Katie, so you can use Katie in your in your version. If you want to post to the chat or if you want to someone wants to unmute your mic. Any ideas, guys? Anyone want to post something to the chat? Any ideas? Okay. Okay, so here we have a response. Katie said that she had a secret and that she really liked Thomas. Good. Thomas. Her friend then tells Thomas, Hi, Thomas. Katie told me that she liked you. Now, notice here in this example, the, the, it says here, hi, Thomas, Katie told me that she liked you. All right. Um, this is going to be dependent on whom you're talking to. Notice that here in this example, you could also say Katie told me. That's fine. You could also say Katie said that. That's fine. Right. Um, you could say Katie uh, claimed that. She mentioned that. Right, so there are many different verbs that you can use, but notice all the verbs are in the past tense. 
right? And this is a good example here in this video where the, uh, the speaker is saying, Katie told me that she liked you. So she's addressing this directly to the person. For our case, it's a little bit different because we conducted an interview and we're reporting on an interview. So for most of our cases, it's going to be something like she told me that she said that uh, she mentioned to me that you could also say that, right? So there are different verbs again that you can use when you're reporting. Uh, just be careful with the verb tense. Here, the present tense verb like changes to the past tense liked. Here's another. The teacher says, don't chew gum. All right, let's try this example. So here we have an example of, it looks like maybe a teacher talking to a student and she's saying, don't chew gum in school. So now it looks like it's the same guy. It looks like maybe the same boy is telling his friend what the teacher told him. So what do you think? How would the student tell his friend what the teacher told him? What do you guys think? Feel free to post into the chat. And you can give this boy a name, you can give this teacher a name, or you can say teacher so-and-so. You can kind of make up some of these names if you need to. Now this example is a little different because it's negative. Right, so the teacher saying, don't chew gum. So this is a little bit different. How would you write it as a reported speech? How would the boy tell his friend what the teacher told him? What do you guys think? Feel free to post something in the chat. How would you write this as a, a reported speech as this boy is telling his friend? All right, so one, one example here, the teacher told me that I couldn't chew gum in school. Correct, that's one way. Any other ways? Teacher told me that we could not chew gum in school, all right? That's certainly, so one example here, uh, both of these are correct. I think I would say in school, not in the school, only because uh, it's not used in the original, plus we, we're talking about school in general, not a sp specific school, although you're, they're in a specific school. Uh, we can say in general, in school, we shouldn't chew gum. In the second example, one of you mentioned or changed to the we, so it's, it's quite possible that she is talking to all of the students and this boy interpret her mentioning or her uh, demand for not chewing gum in school to mean everyone. So we shouldn't chew gum. So we, all right. So another example, my, my teacher told me that I shouldn't chew gum. That's another example, another acceptable response. There's another option too. Anyone else have an alternative to those presented here in the chat? And all of these are possibilities that, uh, that you guys are sharing. Any additional way of saying it? And the way that I'm thinking actually does not even require a subject pronoun. 
in the second clause. It would be something like, like my teacher told me what? And you don't need, in this example that I'm thinking about, you don't need the subject pronoun I or the subject pronoun we. What do you guys think? And this is a special case for negative sentences when uh, the active or direct speech it indicates a negative with not or no. What do you think? Right. My teacher told me not, and I think I would say it like that. My teacher told me not to chew gum in school. Right. And so, again, I would not split the infinitive. Uh, you, so I would just say, I would put not first and then to chew gum. Very good. In school, the boy tells his dad, my teacher told me not to chew gum. My teacher told me not to chew gum in school. Gum in school. Here, the word don't changes to not to. When changing direct speech to reported speech, we often need to change the time. For example, tomorrow becomes the next day. Next week becomes the following week. Yesterday becomes the day before or the- Okay, so here are some examples of adverbs of frequency and how we need to be careful with using different adverbs of frequency when we're converting direct speech to reported speech. Previous day. Last week becomes the week before or the previous week. For example, the boy says to the girl, I All right, so what do you think? We've got a guy talking to a girl indicating here that it happened last Friday night. I will call you tomorrow. So he's telling her Friday night that he will call him tomorrow. So what do you think? How would you convert this or change this to the reported speech? Feel free to upload it to the chat. If you want to unmute your mic and want to offer your suggestion, that would be great too. What do you think? If you want to give names to these two individuals, that's fine. If you want to use pronouns, that's fine. It could be, um, he said he will call me last Friday. No, 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 <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't know. What do you think? How can you change this from the direct speech to indirect? Okay, so one option is he told me that he was going to call me tomorrow. All right. Think about the adverb of frequency. And given that this was said on Friday night, what's an alternative? What's another way? And also, Think of maybe different pronouns that would uh, relate to these two that aren't yourself, just as, a, as an alternative. Uh, this example is fine. He told me that he was going to call me tomorrow, right? But what's another way that we could say this?
Okay, he told me that he will call me the next day. All right, anybody else? Is there a way that we can even be more specific as to the adverb of frequency, like when this is going to happen? Any alternatives? Now, as a, as a clue, look at the right side of the screen where she is talking to a friend. Now, the, the boy who talked to the girl now, is the girl is talking to one of her friends, and it's the following Tuesday. So think of the time here. So last Friday, the boy tells the girl that this. And then on Tuesday, right, so what, three, four days later, the girl is telling her, her friend what the boy told her, how might you, how might she say this to her friend, to her girlfriend? Any ideas, any other suggestions about how she could report what the boy told her and indicate the day of the week? Try to indicate the day of the week. How might you, how might you do this? Maybe uh, he told me that he would call me on Saturday. And again, assume Friday night is when he told her. So tomorrow would be Saturday. So there's a way that you could use Saturday in this response. Let's take a look at the uh, video here. I will call you tomorrow. The girl tells her friend, he said that he would call me the next day, but he didn't call. All right, so one way here is, he said that he would call me the next day. She could have also said, he said that he would call me on Saturday, but he didn't call. You could also say that, right? Uh, depending on how specific you wanted to be, right? If she wanted to indicate, because it's Tuesday, and she's upset because he didn't call, and she wants to make, make that really clear, she probably is going to say, he said that he would call me on Saturday, but he didn't. Right? Instead of saying the next day, because the girlfriend might say, well, the next day, well, when was the next day? Unless she tells her when the phone call happened. But it might even be strange to say if she said, well, he called me on Friday night and he said he would call me the next day. I mean, she could say that. I mean, that's logical. But I think the more common response would be something like, he said he would call me on Saturday and he didn't call. Right, and she's upset because he didn't call. Okay, but notice here there are different ways, right, that you can do it. Um, the point here is you want to be clear. You want to be careful with the verb tenses. And in the video here, notice that will changes to would, and this is one of the functions of would is to express the past. Right. It also expresses a condition, as we are familiar with for conditionals. But in this case, it's actually indicating the past. And this is another function of the modal would. Okay, so this is a good example of using would, the modal, to indicate the past tense. Notice will changes to would, and tomorrow changes to the next day. How can we ask questions in reported speech? First, let's talk. Now, we're going to look at some examples here of asking questions. And 
this is where I want you to, whether you can do it now in class as we look at this, these examples, or after class, I want you to pay close attention to the versions of your questions that you asked as the interviewer, the questions that you included in your wiki versus the indirect questions that you were asked to include as examples in your paragraphs in green font, in green colored font, looking and comparing, making sure that you're using or you're converting directly from a, a direct speech to indirect speech or direct questions to indirect questions that you are converting or changing those directly, specifically, word for word, two versions of exactly the same question. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. Talk about yes or no questions. For example, can you help me carry my groceries? To change this to reported speech, we must use... So notice here we have another example of a modal. Can changes to could. Pay close attention also to the pronouns that are being used in this example. And this is an example, obviously, of a yes, no question. The word if. He asked if I could help him. Notice the word can changes to could. Okay, now let's try something that's not a yes or no question. For example, what is your name? In reported speech, we would say, she All right, so here we have, what is your name for a content question? This is a question that is not a yes, no question. So it can be a how question, a why question, a when question, a where question. She asked what my name was. Pay close attention here to what is coming from the question word what. Right, my name was, the verb goes at the very end, for the indirect question. Notice that the indirect question, in fact, is not a question at all. We have a period at the end. Although it is an indirect question, it's a declarative statement. It's not an uh, interrogative statement, right? The questions here, what is your name, question mark? That's a direct question. So direct questions have a question mark. Indirect questions have a period. Yes, no questions are going to use if. Content questions, uh, the verb is going to go here at the end. She asked what my name was. We don't need to switch the subject and the verb. And we don't need the word if. Okay, so just a reminder here, don't switch the subject and, and the verb, don't. right? This is the, the main thing here, right? We have to switch the subject and the verb in the question, but in the indirect question, it's like a declarative sentence. The subject is coming before the verb. Okay, same here. I could help him. I is the subject coming before the verb need the word if. And one last piece of information. It isn't always necessary to change the tense if something is still true now. For example, direct speech. Diane said, I am a teacher. Reported speech. Diane said that she is a teacher. So there are times where you do not need to change the verb tense. And again, what they're saying here simply is when it's something that is still continuous in the, in the present, that is still going on and it's still true currently, then you can also keep the same verb tense. Diana said that she is a teacher. That is, she said it in the past, but it's still applicable. It still applies today. She still is a teacher. And when you report, what Diane said, you want to make that clear. You want to make it clear that she still is a teacher. Because if, if the reported speech had been, Diane said that she was a teacher, then you're saying Diane is no longer a teacher at this moment. Okay, so be careful also with the verb tenses, especially when 
there are times where you want to express that something is still present that's still going on in the present tense. We don't need to change the tense because this is still true now. All right, so I, I hope this helps going over this video, uh, guys. And what I want to do, I was hoping to spend, to be able to spend a little bit more time with some additional examples. I think tomorrow uh, I want to do that. But for tomorrow, for tomorrow's class, I want you to take another look at, well, first of all, look at my feedback for, from your assignments, all right, from last week. And also for tomorrow, as practice, take a look specifically at the direct questions from your wikis. And I want you to compare each of the questions that you talked about in your paragraph with the direct question to make sure that you are converting word for word each of the questions. One form is a direct question, the other form as the indirect question, right? And uh, I would like for you to bring in your questions if you have some uh, and we can look at some specific ex examples from your assignments. And I'm going to bring in additional examples to give us some more practice converting uh, direct speech to indirect speech. All right. So I know we had some problems with technology. Uh, hopefully I can get this fixed for the next class. I apologize for that. If you, uh, hopefully it wasn't strange. I couldn't hear the video myself, so I was kind of stopping and starting. Uh, but I hope that you're able to get something from the video. And if you have specific questions before tomorrow's class that you want me to address, that you want me to talk about in class, send me a chat. And um, otherwise, we'll look at some of your examples from last week's assignment, and we'll look at additional examples uh, for, uh, to get some additional practice. Any questions, guys, about direct speech and indirect speech based on the video, based on things that we talked about today. Any questions? No questions. All right. Well, I guess if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and conclude uh, today. And uh, again, tomorrow, bring in your questions. Take a look at your own uh, examples of the questions. Just focus for now on the questions that you asked during your interview and how you reported those questions. And uh, we'll get some more practice in tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will be more uh, you guys just practicing uh, converting the direct speech to indirect speech. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.